the photo x 1.5 tfx and welcome back to another video well this one is a little bit special because i brought out the rz 67 pro 2 again uh, the real beast of a camera that this is uh, currently on it i have the mamiya secor z uh, 50 millimeter but uh, that's uh, not the lens that we're going to talk about today but what we are going to talk about is this 140 millimeter uh, Mamiya Micro M uh, maximum aperture 4.5 140 millimeter MLA version lens made in Japan. This was basically NOS or new old stock mint in box. I bought this on Tradera, which is the Swedish equivalent or a Swedish offshoot. Uh, or Scandinavian offshoot, I should probably say, of eBay. <clears throat> and uh, there was a little bit of uh, back and forth with this lens, uh, and it's quite the interesting story. And uh, if you go and look up a, uh, <clears throat> a video about uh, Zach Aries, uh, the famous uh, photographer uh, who is uh, very renowned for his flash work, even though that's not all he does, but anyway, this uh, lens was sold to me, to me, mint in box, original box, original <clears throat> paperwork with it, all of it, uh, the entire, uh, the entire nine yards or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, we're gonna take a little bit about the mishaps and so on when it came to, to this. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, we're going to do a little bit of technical specification on this specification. Uh, shutter, uh, Seiko uh, number one electronic shutter. Uh, the, uh, the composition of the elements in this, it's six elements in four groups, according to the manual. The angle of view is 35 degrees. The minimum aperture is f32. And it has a screw type filter thread of uh, 77 millimeters and a lens hood screen type 77, 77 millimeter which is actually with it in the box but uh, since i don't really have that much use for it uh, i will have it in the box and i know where it is if i need it in the future uh, but anyway it also the size is 90 times 97 millimeters and it has a weight of uh, 870 grams and uh, what is a little bit special with this compared to a lot of different a lot of other uh, rz lenses is that this actually has a floating uh, lens element inside it you actually have two scales here first you have the distance calculation scale which is this blue band uh, that is just to calculate uh, distance and field of depth of field and so on and then you have the inner one that is uh, for the floating element, uh, a lens element that is in this lens. And you basically have a scale that is divided into three, uh, three uh, partitions, so to speak. And it says a floating system. First you have a white scale, and then you have a green scale, and uh, another white scale, and then finally a red scale. Why is that? Well. This is a macro lens, but it is not the complete story. It is a one third micro, one to three is the, uh, the standalone macro capability of this lens. And if you can look at, you know, the front element is very deep recessed into the lens as, as you can, I don't know if you can see it, but may, maybe if the light hits it correctly. Anyway, this is meant to be used with the proprietary Mamiya RZ67 extension tubes with electric co uh, contacts. And you have a number one and a number two extension ring, uh, extension tube, I should probably say. Yes, you know, this is a bellows focus camera natively, but here's the deal. <clears throat> In order to get a one-to-one -one macro, which this lens is fully capable of doing, you need both of the extension tubes. You need the one number one tube and the number two tube. And that's basically what this scale for the floating element is. The first white scale is for the native 
when you just use the lens on the camera body uh, when you use the uh, green scale it's the number one uh, extension tube the number the another white scale for number two extension ring uh, extension tube and then the red in the end is when you have the lens and both extension tubes coupled together then you can do a real one-to-one -one macro with this lens but all in all it also is it's not unifunctional it's not a one-trick pony i have seen that this can also be used fairly successfully or very successfully i should say as a portrait lens but now to the little bit of the elephant in the room when it comes to this lens or rather the purchasing uh, you know uh, tours around it this was on an auction on Tradera as I've stated and it was actually uh, I was the only bidder I won it uh, the guy who I bought it from apparently he had over th I think it was over 3,000 com uh, 3,000 customer feedbacks on his Tradera account and all of them were positive he had zero negative uh, common uh, comebacks and so on and it turned out that when this was shipped to me something had been misaligned because another another customer at the same time had bought a Hasselblad lens and those had been mixed up so I was sent a Hasselblad lens and that other customer who I want to be remained nameless um, got my lens instead and what the seller wanted was that we should you know send each other the right package and that's a big red flag for me directly when when things not is not coming from the person i have purchased something from but it's going to come from a third party and so on and it's a private sale no call me cynical but uh, I think you should have a healthy dose of cynicism when it comes to buying stuff on the internet, unfortunately, in today's climate. Uh, and uh, yeah, what had happened was that I, the seller contacted me and I told them that I don't want any third party to know my information, my address and so on. I don't, I don't really like that. Uh, and he was very understanding about that. And I thought first, I want to, I want to recall this uh, purchase. I don't want anything to do with it. But still, I have the lens. How come? Well, it turned out that this cell. It, it's a little bit like uh, you know that uh, Zach Aries interview when he was asked to be a photography assistant, and before he knew who who he was going to be assisting, he basically blew it off as being. No, I'm the photographer, I don't assist. And it turned out that it was Joe McNally, uh, Natural Geographic, who was gonna do the shoot. And then he basically had to take a, you know, swallow his pride and say that, okay, I would really love to be Joe McNally's assistant. And it was basically a little bit the same here, but I didn't know. I just didn't know. The guy who I bought from, who had uh, just, a generic Tradera name uh, was actually a guy with over 40 years of experience when it came when it comes to photography gear and equipment and it, he runs his own store which I'm gonna put a link to in the description below uh, and uh, you know really awesome guy actually and it turns out that uh, this is really NOS or new old stock NOS uh, So yeah, it it has never been used to so on and I was really lucky to get it for the price paid uh, And all in all really Awesome uh, end to this little story this mishap and I would gladly buy from this uh, particular seller again uh, Maybe in the future I would be interested in the extension tubes so I can really use this as a one-to-one -one, uh, macro. Preferably now when autumn is coming, uh, we got a lot of, you know, even though I'm not an autumn person, I'm a, I'm a huge spring and summer person. But all in all, we're gonna get some really interesting color shifts on all the trees and so on. 
and be able to do full macro with a six times seven uh, image, you know, uh, ima uh, negative size and so on, that would be quite cool in the future. So then it might be a future project to get the both of the extension tubes. But I would like to ask you guys now out there in YouTube land, uh, if you buy something on eBay or if you have any other type of auction, Craigslist I know is very large in the United States, how would you handle a situation like this? Uh, my instant reaction, because as, as yet again, call me cynical, is to just pull the emergency brake and say that, okay, this doesn't feel right for me, I'm bailing out of this purchase. But uh, with some investigation and some uh, polls on some photography forums, Facebook, uh, among others, I started to notice that this guy is really a knowledgeable, well-established, uh, fairly extremely experienced guy when it comes to photography and uh, I would really want to buy from him again and as I stated a little bit of a PR for him uh, site is in the description or website is in the description so yeah all in all I'm looking forward to testing this lens out uh, and um, yeah, that's all for me for now. And this is Tobias Bergstrom from TB Photo X 1.5 to FX. And I'd like to see you guys in the next video. And as always, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. So take care from now on. Bye.